Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games, back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. Is that guy going to butt? Oh, he's close. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games, back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We're right in the middle of the chaos here, folks. We've been working on this Bally Strikes and Spares pinball machine. We did a video on it already where we worked on the power supply. We cleaned it up a little bit. And we're on to the next video, so here we are. This thing is in nice shape except for the playfield. Playfield's pretty rough. So we're going to get to that eventually. But this is just a really cool game. People enjoy it. And it's got one of the coolest back glasses ever. So it's this old school 70s bowling alley. Very cool. So on the previous video, we worked on the power supply and the the replace the power cord coming into the machine and we ended up where we had one light bulb that worked but that's all we've plugged in so far so uh we need to work on the the next part of it and let me put down this uh back glass so you can see where we were what we were doing and what we're going to do next so on the previous video we worked on the rectifier board there and the transformer and um Tested all the voltages now, everything's cool. We moved the strapping so that the thing is running on 120 volts instead of the original 115 volts. Um, and uh, we repinned one of the connectors, this connector here, which is the cabinet. So that, since that's the only one plugged in, we only had power going to the cabinet, which meant that the two light bulbs on the front door were all that were getting power. One of the light bulbs is missing and the other one lit up. So we're good, we're good. But we tested the power too, so everything's cool. After the power supply, the rectifier board here, it sends voltage next up to this solenoid driver board. So that's our next thing that we're going to work on. But here's the deal. It had a fuse blown or missing on this, on this rectifier board. That is the fuse that uh, is responsible for the 12 volts that runs up to the solenoid driver board. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to unplug this solenoid driver board. Uh, because I think that may be shorted. This, this is the area of the board that is the 5 volt regulator. It takes that 12 volt signal uh, and turns it into 5 volts. Well, the fuse was blown down here, so it could be that there is a problem up here. Okay. So before we plug anything else in, I'm just going to go ahead and unplug that. I think I'm also going to unplug this lamp driver board over here. Um, I don't think that's necessary but I think it also does uh, uses it may use the 12 volt I'm not sure the displays use the 5 volt that comes from this solenoid driver board okay so we don't have to really worry about those since we've got this unplugged so we're doing it we're, we're working on this in, in a systematic way so the power comes out of the wall and goes to a line filter in the bottom on the previous video we worked on that it then comes up here to this transformer and the transformer transforms the power to different voltages and then it runs to this rectifier board where some of those are rectified into DC voltage. Then it runs up here, okay? So before we plug, before we work on that board though, I need to finish repinning these connectors. So if you, if you didn't see the previous video, basically we went through and replaced these little uh, connector pins inside of these sockets. I did it on the one socket, the, the one housing, to get the cabinet to work. These two are actually burnt though, and it's pretty significant. So I'm gonna replace the entire housing. Um, I'll just keep those in stock, the common sizes for pinball machines. So I'm gonna replace this one and this one uh, so that we, uh, we have nice, clean connectors that aren't going to break on us. So if you need any kind of Molex parts like that, you, there's two places I send people to. You can go to uh, uh, our buddy at uh, twistywristarcade.com. He sells a lot of pinball and arcade game parts uh, and a lot of Molex parts. And then also you can go to, there's a gentleman uh, at, with a website, arcadepartsandrepair.com. Arcadepartsandrepair.com. He's got a bunch of, of um, connectors and things like that too. So if you're looking for those kind of parts, that's the place to, to get them. Uh, you, people ask me, well, why don't you just tell people to order them on Jamico and stuff? Well, yeah, you can order them there too, but uh, these are the specific ones uh, that you need for arcade games and pinball machines. I kind of like sending people to little mom and pop places where they're specifically supporting the hobby, so why not support them? So check that out. 
Uh, so let me let me mess with that. Now, one interesting thing. One of the wires has burned up, and they have put a nail in it to help hold the wire in. Interesting. So the, the reason for that is uh, AC voltage runs through some of these. So it, and usually it's used for the uh, the uh, la the light bulbs on the playfield. So the amperage is a little higher on that, I guess. And so they just burn the connector. Well, apparently it burnt that one enough that they decided to stick a wire in there. I mean, a nail in there, and that nail would hold the connector closer to the pin on the board that it plugs into and fix their problem with the light bulbs blinking. Mm. Yeah, so we're going to replace this connector and we're going to replace the pins. So that's next. All right, all new connector, new pins. I, look, I even had the keying plug. You want your keying plug, people, so you don't plug it in wrong. If you plug it in on the wrong pin, catastrophic things can happen. Okay, so now that we've got that one done, that is actually the power to the playfield. So we'll turn it back on and just see if any of the playfield lights work, just for the heck of it. So that's our coin door one. And yeah, some of the playfield lights, or a lot of them actually, are still uh, doing their thing. Look how dirty this thing is. I asked Joe where we got it. I couldn't remember where he picked it up. We bought this uh, off of a family. It was sitting out in their carport. And Joey said it appeared to him it had been out there a long time. So the spider thing, I was theorizing in the previous video that maybe all the spiders were out of a basement. And I thought, well, maybe it's from another part of the country or something because we don't even have basements down here. But no, apparently... It was just out in their carport. So it's starting to cooperate. We're slowly bringing it back. The back glass is still dead. So next we need to do that big long connector. Repinned all three of them. Put the uh, cage back on so that you uh, can't easily touch those connections on the transformer. And uh, that gave us our... Uh, back box lights of course it's so light out you can't really tell days go by people um, so next up I'm gonna replace all of those light bulbs with new ones and then finally we'll be ready to mess with our solenoid board all right folks here is the solenoid driver board and um, sorry, I'm unplug this. Um, if you remember in the previous video the fuse that goes to the 12 volt um, was missing. So I don't know for sure that it was blown, it was just missing. There wasn't anything wrong with the rectifier board other than we needed to service it, but there was nothing shorted on it. So that 12 volt supply, it comes up to this solenoid driver board in the top right hand corner of the cabinet. Runs in on this connector and then it goes to this uh, voltage regulator here. And so if this voltage regulator was shorted, that could have been what blew the fuse if, in fact, the fuse was blown. So this is a 78H05. 05. 78H05. Um, the H is significant. A 7805, 7805, is, I think, 1 amp, and a 78H05 is like 5 amp. So it's completely different. Um, so we're going to test this and see if it seems shorted. So, here are the traces. Have they even marked the, I think it just says 1, 2, 3. It's hard to read. The resolution's not great. Yeah, 1, 2, 3. Uh, so we're going to see how those tests in circuit and see if that seems like a shorted transistor or not. I don't have a way really to do this without blocking your view, I don't believe, but we'll see. So we're going to set this on diode test. Now, which two pins do I check? I have no clue. We're just going to check them and see what happens. So if I go between these two, 0 0.056. So does that mean the transistor's bad? Not necessarily, because we're testing it in circuit. Okay. 
So we're gonna see what else we got. If I go between these two, they're also shorted. If I go between these two, it's a dead short. Right? So we can pretty confidently say that thing, that transistor is probably shorted all the crap. It could be something on the board that is shorted and making this appear to be shorted. But whatever's going on, what's on Evan is, um, it's blowing the fuse on the on the rectifier board. So that's definitely, uh, definitely a problem. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that sucker out of there. And then we'll, uh, we'll test it out of circuit. All right, so let me show you a good little trick. Um, so this is the offending transistor. It is a UA78H05SC. So when I test it, between pins 1 and pins 2, you shouldn't really do it while you're touching it, but it'll work. For, for uh display purposes these two pins are shorted together okay so it's bad but here's the trick now that we've removed it let's recheck the board right this will help us understand if there's something in the board that's messed up too so see the 0 0.057 that's not necessarily a short if i go between these two pins there's no short so why am i saying this is not necessarily a short it's because the way the board is set up, there's probably a resistor that we're checking with a diode test, and that's a no bueno. Now, if I check between these two pins, I do not get a short. Okay? So the only thing that we get that's even potentially anything is between these two pins. All right, so if we look at the actual board... These two are giving us a low reading, like a short 0 0.057. Um, but look, this trace comes over to here. This trace comes over to here. That sure looks like that's probably a resistor between them. And it is. You can even see the traces from the top. So this trace and this trace are connected by a resistor. So you can't test that connection in circuit. But we can certainly see if this pin and this pin are still connected, and they're not. So the only thing shorting them together is this shorted transistor. So what's the trick? So the trick is basically if you're testing something in circuit and it's shorted, once you remove the part and then test it and confirm that it's bad, go ahead and test the board with nothing in it and see if you still have the same problem. So the connection between here and here is no longer there, and the connection between there and there is no longer there. So there's there's no other short on the board. It was just that transistor. So I'm going to put a new one in, um, and I'm going to go ahead and replace this filter capacitor that's for the same thing. It's for the 5-volt filter capacitor, basically. Um, so we'll see what that looks like. New one installed. Let's see what happens. I can't tell if I'm blocking you, the way the light is. There we go. So no short that way. Let's try it the other way. I can't remember which direction we were checking. No short that way. You still got the point zero five whatever there. But you have a gate there. So it's between 0.4 and 0.7, the voltage drop. And no short that way. So what was going on before was, since those two were shorted, the natural resistance across that resistor had transferred over to here as well so we had the same thing going on here so that would have caused all kinds of problems no bueno so the the um it probably would have blown the fuse if it didn't blow the fuse you may get a situation where it just passed the 12 volts that came into it as the output that's the worst thing that those things can do they short internally and then uh, the output, instead of being the 5 volts that it's supposed to be, since it's a, a regulator, it's a, it makes it 12 volts. Ugh, not good. Okay, so uh, we got that. I still need to replace the filter capacitor that I was talking about. Okay, so we took out an 11,000 microfarad 20 volt 
and we put in a 15,000 microfarad 25 volt. Okay, so there is one little one little uh, mod I like to do. This is the ground trace for that 5 volt rectifier. If you notice, it goes out on one pin over here. That's the so basically it it does the 5 volt the 5 volts, but the ground trace to this cap only goes out one pin. Well, if you have any kind of problem on that pin where there's a little resistance or whatever, all the 5 volts in your entire game is screwed up. So if you just simply attach that to the ground that's running around the board, um, now you've got the 5 volt supply grounded to everything in the game. When it runs out this pin, it goes down to the transformer and it is grounded there. And so it, it, the, the ground is all tied together at the transformer. But if you tie it together at this board as well, it gives you like 5 different paths back to the transformer. It just makes everything much much more uh, rock steady. You're basically trying to um, reduce the, the the propensity for that thing to start floating and get to where ground is not ground. Ground is 0.5 or something like that, right? So we're just tying all of our grounds together. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to connect this trace to this trace, which is the ground trace on the board. And then everywhere there's a ground, it's also connected to that. So it works good. So you just scrape back a little bit of the solder mask, jump some solder from the pin to there. Bam! There you are. Easy peasy. We're going to do the same thing on the display ground. So this cap up here, this is the filter cap for the display voltages. This whole section is the display voltages. Um, it has the same problem. The ground runs out on one line back to the the power supply, the rectifier board, where it's connected to all the other grounds. But if that line gets flaky at all, you're going to have problems with your displays. So if you tie that line, that ground, to this ground that runs around the board, no more problem. So the grounds are all tied together at the power supply. And then they move up on separate lines up to the, the solenoid driver board. Well, if any of those lines get a little resistance on the connector or anything, you get all kinds of problems. So let's say that the ground is carried up on the display voltage pin and then runs over to this filter cap, blah, blah, blah. And then let's say that the, uh, let's say that, that connection gets tenuous, right? Well, if I've got a jumper to this other ground then the pin that's running the, the ground up for the 5 volt, the volt, the voltage can use that as a ground. You know, So basically you're, you're just tying the things that are tied together at the rectifier board. You're also tying them together at the solenoid board. Works great. So uh, that's what we're doing. Okay, so uh, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to scratch back a little bit of the trace there and then jump a wire from here to there. Easy peasy. Now, why didn't we replace that capacitor? It's because usually it doesn't need replaced. If you replace it, uh, if you have problems with it, what you'll see is you'll get a little shimmy in your uh, display voltage, like your display, um, your display image on your displays. It'll do this a little bit, and that's the sign that that needs replaced. So if that goes bad, that's what happens. It's not the end of the world. If this goes bad. All of the 5 volt supply for all of the IC chips in the entire game, including the MPU that runs everything, get this going on on the voltage running everything. It's not good. Especially whenever you have, like these chips for instance, controlling all the solenoids. You know, So you've got a pop bumper, or let's, let's, what's a good one? Well, you've got a kicker. I guess it's the same as the pop bumpers. Um... And uh, it's supposed to fire and then let off. Well, if that thing locks on, you're blowing fuses, burning up coils, etc. These chips are what control it and keep it from locking on or make it happen. Right? So what if the power supply to these chips is going, Duh! right? <laughs> By the way, that's, I'm just making a noise. I'm just making a noise, people. Calm down, people. Um... 
if the uh, if the the power supply to these is right, it might lock a coil on or something like that, or you might get the game to reset, or you might get the uh, um, you know the the code to crash and the game gets stuck in in a in a certain position. So what if it's firing a coil and then the code crashes? Right, lots of problems. So you don't you don't want ripple on your uh, your five volt supply. Bad idea. So that one needs to get replaced. But this one, if it messes up, worst thing you get is a little bit of shimmy shimmy cocoa pop on the uh, on the displays. Um, okay, so that's that. So we need this is the area that though that does the voltage regulation for the display. So it gets in like two hundred and forty volts or something like that. When you check it on the rectifier board without this plugged in, it's going to say like 180 or 190. It's because this cap is hasn't came into play yet. This cap, once it once this board is plugged in, is going to raise that voltage up to like 240 volts or something. So on some of these, there's different uh, setups. Some of these have test points. I think the uh, yeah, there's two. So you got a test point here and a test point here, right? So one of these test points, I can't remember which one's which, but one of these test points will be like 240 volts, and then the other one is the regulated voltage, which is controlled by this potentiometer. By the way, this type of potentiometer is crap. These are the worst ones, and they use them on the... Look at our fuse. We'll get to that in a minute. They use them on the... Um, on the in this... Um, this position and Gottlieb used them on their their five volt supply on all of their system 80 and system three um, games so this this thing they will go bad and what happens is they go open they just get dirty inside and will no longer pass voltage so if you've got one where you don't have the voltage coming out and it hasn't blown the fuse it could very well be this potentiometer. This one feels pretty tight, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, but we need to test um, this transistor and this transistor. Or uh, I guess it's a voltage regulator again. 2N3440. Okay. You don't usually have a lot of trouble out on this one as well. You don't usually have a lot of trouble out on them, but sometimes you will. If they have failed, usually it will blow the fuse. Now, why is this like this? It's because there's several different types of fuses. Someone has put one that's slightly too big, physically large, in a fuse holder meant to hold a smaller one. So let me pop that out and uh, see, what deal, see what the deal is. So there's the fuse. I can't quite read it. Whoa, too close. We got to back out. Abandon, abandon. So it's supposed to be quarter amp, I think, and uh, there is a one and a four. I guess that's a quarter amp, maybe. Kind of looks that way. But it's the wrong physical size. Right? So, we are simply going to... Oh no! It, it smacked, it cracked on us. We were going to simply bend it back. Man. Hmm. Well, that ain't gonna work. See how loose that is now? So what do you do in this situation? Yeah, come on, people. People, did you really think I didn't have enough? Come on, come on, people. I do this all the time. I, I had this problem before, people. Come on now. Of course I've got replaced. You think I'm going to replace both? I'm not going to... People, that one's fine. <laughs> I'm not going to replace both of them. You think I'm just going to waste them? You don't get that many... If you just waste them... Come on now, people. Come on now. We don't have to replace both of them. Come on. The people that run the world have decided to torment us by making fuses that are just slightly the wrong size. So that's the one that they shoehorned in. By the way, that is not like the typical cartridge one that you see. 
that is. So they make, that's the regular size one, what I would call regular size. And then they make this one. This one's useless. I ain't never used this one. I don't even know, that ain't, that ain't, we don't need that. Let's get rid of that one. That's the one, right? Now that one is not to be confused with this one. Don't get that one. <laughs> so when you're looking online, when you go on eBay to buy your cheap Chinese fuses, make sure you get the right ones, people. You don't, you don't want that one, and you don't want that one, and you don't want that, and you want this one. You should know that, right? Now, I would tell you which one that is, but uh, it probably will cause problems. I'll probably tell you wrong or something. But that's how it should look, people. It should snap in there like that. And whenever it grabs it, it should squeeze it. It should just love on it. It should feel like it's hugging it. Right? You don't want the thing all loose. No, you want it good and strong. All right, so they got that fixed. Uh, we need to check this, this, and this. And you can do that in circuit again, like we did on the other one. Okay, so on the back of this board, can you see it? You can kind of see it. You've got transform transistor here, uh, transistor here, and a transistor here that are marked, and the, the leads are in little triangles, three-point situation. Um, and you can check these in the in circuit pretty well. Basically, if you if you can get a pretty good reading between all three pins, one way or the other, you're pretty good. Now, this is not the the, the correct way to test these, but it'll work. So, see if I measure between the the screw which is attached to the case and the other two pins, I get 0.516 and 0.484. So that's a voltage drop. You're getting between 0.4 and 0.7. If you get less than 0.4, it's probably shorted. If you're over 0.7, there's no real relationship between those two pins. Um, and then if we do the same down here, see how we got a 1.5 between the two. But if I go the other way with the other two, uh, 0.6 and 0.596, right? If I were to measure between these two, we might be able to get some kind of... No, nope, that's all good. And remember, we're doing all this in circuit. So, like I said, this is not really the, the correct way to do it. We're just checking to see, is there is there an obvious short somewhere? That's what we're checking for. That might be the best way to put it. Is there an obvious short? No, there's not. I don't see an obvious short. So let's fire her up and see if it blows the fuse <laughs> Okay, so next up, we're going to check all these transistors at the bottom of the board. These are all the solenoid drive driver transistors, drive transistors. Um, and so we're just going to go and compare each one to the next one and see if any of them are messed up. <laughs> right? So I'll do one here in the middle where you can see it. So let's see here. This is connected to the center pin of each one. In between it and the top pin, there is no connection. So that's not a way to test it, right? That won't work. We're not getting any kind of measurement here. So if we reverse the leads. Between the middle pin and the top pin. Whoa. 0.537, middle pin and the bottom pin, 0.511. So that seems right. So we'll do the one next to it. 0 0.539, 0 0.522. So you see what you seem to be getting on each one of them, right? Well, if you keep going along and you find one that's like doing something like that, well, it's shorted, right? I just did that by touching the same <laughs> thing. But you can go through and just check each one. You're looking for things that are obviously shorted or things that are obviously open. So like if, if you 
touch it and you instead of it being 0.5 like all the other ones now it says open line or it's something really high well you know there's probably something going on there so when, whenever you're whenever you got like tons of them that you're doing the same exact circuit you don't really even need to know how it works you know you need to have a little bit of an understanding of it but I don't even know which one's the base collector or emitter So we're just going through looking for something that's not working right. So why why do I have this pin on that little resistor there instead of, or the cap or whatever that is, instead of the actual leg? Well, you could do it either way, but anytime you can check something farther down the trace, it's better. So for instance, if I'm checking here, well, that's also checking the solder to the transistor. Right? If I'm touching here, I'm touching the actual pin on the transistor. But it's better to know if the transistor is in the board properly, too. So I'm checking through a trace to the transistor. And then if I were to check up, these are actually connected. See, they're all, the bottom ones are all connected. Check over to here. Well, I'm checking through the trace on the board. You know, that tells me that it's soldered in well. And then instead of checking on that pin, if I'm checking on the trace up here, that tells me that pin soldered in well. So you're anytime you're checking a component, it's better if you can do it at least easily to check from traces instead of checking right on the actual component. So anyway, I'm gonna go through, check all of those, and see if any of them are bad, need replaced. So they all tested fine. So there's no obvious thing wrong with them. It's still they still could be messed up, but it doesn't seem that way. Sometimes when you start trying to run voltage through things, though, it doesn't like it. We're just testing it with a multimeter. So the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to re-solder, put new fresh solder on all of these pins that connect all of these to everything. I got to say though, this one's in decent shape. So you're looking for cracks around the actual pin. This top one, if you look down at the base of it, it does seem to have some cracks on it. That one's really bad. Look at it. Ugh. I thought those people were coming in. They were not. Um, that end's not that bad. It's usually when you get down to the end of the connectors. Yeah, that one's pretty bad. And then you see somebody seems to have put a little solder on that one at some point. That end's not that bad. Alright, so here's the ones that... Yeah, see, somebody's been working on it. See how they drew something through it there between the pins to make sure they weren't shorted together with the flux or something? So someone has resoldered that at some point. Okay, look at that bottom pin. Look at that. So if that's cracked loose, and that's the ground, let's say that was the ground pin we're talking about. Then all of your 5 volt chips lose the ground going to them. That ain't good. Well, not really. They wouldn't really do that, but they would lose it going to the filter cap. You can see that top one up there. It looks pretty bad, too. So what I do when they're real ugly like this is I take a wire brush and brush them. Just you know, for 30 seconds or something. And you're just shining the pins up. If you do that, you're getting you're, you're just going to knock off a bunch of the contaminant. You're basically cleaning the solder a little bit by doing that. Uh, because if I try to solder to one of those pins that's real dirty, what's going to happen is the solder isn't going to mix with the old solder. So it's you're going to end up with a real ugly joint that's not um, uh, conducting very well. So you want it nice and shiny where it looks new. And then you put a little bit more solder on each joint, and bam, that's all you need to do. Now, uh, some people remove the old solder and then put new solder. You can do that too if you want, but I don't find it necessary. So let me do that, and uh, then we'll be ready to pop this thing back in and test some voltages. Okay, so here's how it looks after we serviced it a little bit. Look at this beautiful board. I mean, they, they just did such a cool job designing this back in the day. This area is the 5-volt filter. Turns 12 volts into 5 volts, regulated. Um, this area is the display 
regulation. The reason they have this little plastic piece on here is because it's much higher voltage. If you touch this cap, you know you're touching 200 volts. I mean, it can ding you. And then this bottom area uh, handles all of the solenoids. And uh, this is just how they used to make stuff. It's just a, you know, big, clunky, uh, you know, if you're into vintage electronics, this is just beautiful. Look at it. This is a very nice, clean example of it, too. You've got a little bit of, you know, the, the transistors don't look new anymore. But, uh, very cool. They designed this board, I think, in 77, you know, along with their first, it was definitely in the first digital machine they made. I, I can't remember if Bally had one out in 77. I think they did. I'm pretty sure 8-Ball was out in 77. Um, and, um, this particular revision is from 1980, but very cool. The day will come when all of these original ones are gone and uh, the pinballs that people are still playing from the late 70s and the early 80s, they'll have new boards in and things like that, but this is the original one. Now let's go see if the thing still works. So we've got it back in the machine. I have plugged in the top connector over there is what the voltage comes in on. Uh, we still have the lamp driver board disconnected and the MPU, of course, is not even in it. Uh, so we're going to see if it, uh, what it do. <laughs> so uh, it appears that with that uh, voltage regulator shorted that it was blowing the fuse down there. So we're going to see if it blows the fuse when we turn it on or if everything looks all right. So this is literally a smoke test. When people say a smoke test, they literally mean you're looking to see if anything catches on fire. That's literally what that means. And, you know, people say, uh, you know, the, the joke is, oh, the chip let out the magic smoke. They're serious. I mean, the thing literally could catch on fire. So that's what you're looking for. So we're going to turn it on, see if anything crazy happens, like a fuse blow, something starts smoking. If it, is, if it does, we'll turn it uh, right back off. Another thing people will do um, that I've mentioned in a few videos is, now on this one, we don't have the MPU in, but they'll turn it on and then look over here at the light bulbs. Oh, are the lights on? Completely oblivious to whether or not the, the freaking power supply is catching on fire that you just worked on, right? So when you turn it on, you want to look back this way. We're looking to see if a fuse flashes because it blew, and we're looking to see if anything up here catches on fire because it's shorted or something like that. And I'm going to keep my hand on the switch so I can turn it right back off if something crazy happens. Yep, the fuse blew. You saw that, right? A fuse immediately blew. I don't know which one it was, but one of the fuses blew as soon as I turned it on. I would imagine it's either for the... Uh, for the uh, display voltages, or it's for that five volt that we were talking about. So with the fuse blown, I don't see anything smoking or anything like that, so we can leave it on. Whoa. There's something fried on us. I can't tell just by looking at it. Whoa. So let's see what we've got. Uh, we'll check the high voltage display first. This is kind of tricky. This is not the greatest setup. Yeah, I think it was it. Okay. So let's see what we've got over here. If I can, it doesn't help that it's dark in there. All right, so we do still have our 12 volt. Now I keep calling it 12 volt. As you can see, it's unregulated, so it's actually 16 volts. But coming out of that trans transistor, is 5.09 volts. Now you may say, well how, if it's supposed to have 12 but 16's going in, how does it have 5 coming out like it's supposed to? It's just what it does. The thing is designed so that you can send like 40 volts into it. It's something like that. Like 40 volts and it will still send out 5 volts. It's just the design of the thing. Okay. So uh, we've got our 5 volts, but we had something happen over here with the displays. Now, unfortunately, we've got all five of the displays plugged in. It could be that one of the displays is shorted. So we'll have to think about that. Okay, so I'm going to turn it back off and then uh, unplug all five displays, confirm that that 
uh, fuse blew. Now we, we also have the slight chance that it was underfused. These uh, display voltages, uh, the fuses for them are, are not much. They're, they're very, uh, it's like this one up here is like a quarter amp or something. And the one down here is like eight tenths of an amp or something like that. So I'm going to, I'm going to turn it off, pull that fuse out, confirm that it's blown, and then we'll go from there. Okay, folks, so I can't find anything on that solenoid driver board that would, that is shorted or anything. Similarly, I can't find anything on the power supply that's shorted. However, these four diodes here are what create that voltage, that rectify that voltage. And they were, they were pretty pathetic looking, right? And there was one that had been replaced already. All of that looked kind of janky. So I just went ahead and replaced them and put two, four new, uh, one in 4007, is that correct? One in 4007 uh, rectifying diodes in it. So we've got four brand new ones. Now why would I guess that that's the problem? I think I mentioned it earlier in this video. Sometimes when you start running juice through something, it's got problems. So this was actually the, the, uh, the voltage was fine with nothing else plugged in. But then we plug that in and it's taking that, that voltage and uh, rectifying it down, regulating it down. So this is rectifying it, which is turning AC to DC. And it's coming out as a DC voltage up to the solenoid driver board and then they're regulating it on the solenoid driver board. The fuse on there is not blowing. The fuse back here is blowing. So I'm just kind of taking an educated guess that it's this. Another way of looking at it is this is the first thing that it goes through. If it's not this, then we'll move back up to there. But there's nothing that tests wrong. There's nothing that... Uh, these four diodes tested fine. And again, if you unplug the solenoid driver board where there's basically no load on this thing... Um, it doesn't blow the fuse and the voltage even tests fine. But I'm thinking that what's going on is once that starts drawing some amperage through it or th some amperage through here, uh, one of these diodes is shorting. So I went ahead and replaced them and I think that's going to fix it. But we'll see. All right, so we are not blowing fuses. Our new uh, diodes did the trick and if I very carefully, it's easier to do this without the cover on it, but your, the problem is, is if you were to put this in there and touch a couple things, you could burn something up, but you know, you could use a, uh, a clip. Bam. That's where you want it. So it's, it's adjusted to 184 just randomly. I didn't even try to do that. Which is about right. It's supposed to be 190, but it's pretty common for people to turn them down just a little bit. I don't think the people that had this did that, but I did um, just by turning that uh, that uh, potentiometer back and forth. So, um, yeah, I think we're good. Oh, we let's make sure we still got our five. Five point one, perfect, perfect. Uh, there's another voltage down here that is like the voltage that runs the, uh, basically you get five all over the board. It's basically it's running these chips. So anyway, I think we're good with that. Um, I think the last thing I'll do is turn it back off and plug these five displays in just to make sure with that load on it that it doesn't blow any fuses. But you saw what happened there, right? Just to summarize, the uh, the power supply tested fine. The voltages were even all there. But as soon as you plugged this in, you were blowing the fuse down here. It was because it was just pulling too amperage through. And once it started doing that, that one of the diodes must have been breaking down and shorting. So uh, there was absolute, there was nothing wrong with this board, even though when you plug this board in, that's what created the issue. It was just a weak powertrain.
So cool. All right, so I'm gonna plug those in and then we'll turn it back on and uh, make sure it doesn't blow any fuses there. All right, smoke test. Okay, I don't see any smoke. You see any smoke? It usually takes about three seconds. Do not see any smoke. Now, interesting, on these old plasma displays, there's no signal going to them. The MPU is not there. But if you look carefully on a lot of them, you can see a little orange glow in there. That's from your high voltage that uh, we just fixed. That's the fuse that was blowing. So we have three, four, five displays all have the little glow in them. Okay, let's turn off the lights so we can see it a little better. This is part of the charm of these old machines. Like LED displays don't do that. It's nothing important. Who cares that it's got a little glow on it, right? But it just is what it is. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like part of this thing being from the 70s is that's one of the little idiosyncrasies of a 70s ballet pinball. The plasma displays have this little orange glow to them even whenever uh, they're not displaying anything. So it's just, it's just cool. I was talking about that on a, um, what was the one the other day? Oh, we had an EM where the, uh, the lights were blinking on and off. And it had blinking bulbs installed. And there's a little click that you hear every time it does that. Click, tink, 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 tink. And it's just, it's, it's just a sound that no one would ever reproduce if you made a modern equivalent or if you have a machine that has LEDs in it, it doesn't sound the same. It's just a little difference. It doesn't mean that it sounds worse or anything. It's just different. So like LED displays look awesome and I use them all the time. It's hard to have an original set of plasmas that are in good enough shape anymore that you can still use them. Hopefully these five will be fine, but if they aren't, we'll have to put LED displays in them. And they look good. It's a good product. They don't, you don't need, even need that whole 190 volt supply that we were just messing with. You don't even have to have it with the LED displays. So the LED displays are great, but they're not 1978 or whatever this is. You know? And one of the things that's different is just something small like that. There's a little orange glow inside of it from the high voltage. Now, why does that even matter? I'm just saying that's a little a way you can tell if if you're getting your uh, your high voltage to the displays, but um, it's just little things like that. It's nice having one of these that's got a lot of original stuff in it. Now, with that said, we don't even have the MPU, so we're going to put a brand new MPU in it, um, and we're going to do that next time because this video is pretty long. Now, it may seem like we didn't get much done, but we actually did. We got a lot done. We got the we figured out that the power supply, ultimately, still had an issue with it, and we fixed it. The solenoid driver board, uh, we've got, remember, the 5-volt uh, rec uh, regulator was shorted, and now it's not. It's working properly. It was blowing a fuse as well, but not anymore. Uh, we checked all of the solenoid drives. We know all of those seem to be all right. Uh, and then we fixed the issue with the displays, the display uh, voltage. We uh, we fixed the issue with all of the connectors on the on the board. So when we're working on the next little bit of stuff, namely the MPU and the displays, we know that the power supply is nice and solid because we've already been through it. If you come in and you just kind of scatterbrained work on this stuff. So, man, the game won't come up. I'll bet there's something wrong with that MPU. Let me take that out and mess with it. And I'll put a new one in. Just pop a new one in. Eh. Yeah, you might get the thing running, but how long, how well is it going to run? How long is it going to run? This one's going to be rock solid whenever we get it done because we've been through the power supply. Every little bit of it. Messed with every bit of it and then took it back out and did it again. There's like 10 screws in that thing. It ain't fun. But if it needs to be done, it needs to be done. And then the solenoid driver board, we've been through every little thing on that. You know? We know that it's right. So it's nice and solid. It's going to be reliable. 
they make new they make new solenoid driver boards they make new rectifier boards but they solder in all those wires they don't I think there's a company now that makes the transformer and the uh, rectifier board but it's like 350 bucks or something but I'm glad they make it in case you need it um, so you know I'm just saying take your time work through it and do it in an orderly manner not because I'm a neat freak I'm not uh, but because uh, it just makes sense and you're going to end up with a better product in the end. So another thing we're not doing is we haven't even touched the play field yet. Because who cares about the play field if the thing won't even run, right? Come on. Come on. It reminds me of Christine. The movie Christine, whenever he was, uh, you know, Christine was Christining itself. And uh, the guy that works at the, uh, or the guy that owned the car shop or whatever, the, the garage, was saying, look at this idiot kid. He's putting a brand new windshield wiper on a cracked windshield. You know, and then, of course, later they, they said that because Christine later was going to fix the windshield herself, right? But uh, that's a good point. You know, you're putting lipstick on a pig. If, the, if, there's, if there's something, uh, if the fundamentals of it aren't right, don't worry about whether or not one of the light bulbs doesn't work or anything until you, uh, you get to that point. So I like working from them from the wall to the, the line filter, to the transformer, to the rectifier board, to the solenoid board, and we have done all of that. Um, now we're up to the MPU, so next time we'll pop one of those in there. It'll be a brand new one. We'll read over the instructions a little bit and throw it in. Uh, Alltech makes those, and they're, they're great little boards. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave your comments down below. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. We didn't have to do that, people. I had somebody a while back say, you shouldn't say that. Oh, you, you know, you're making money off of the, the ads in the video, people. I am not getting rich off of the ads in the videos, okay? We do okay. I'm not saying that we don't make any money off of it, but believe me when I say I did not have to film this. I, I like doing it, though. I like all of you cool people out there on YouTube. You're some beautiful people. I, mean, I was just talking to someone who emailed us, uh, Monica and Tony from Australia, Melbourne, Australia. And they were, Monica was telling me that Tony watches all of the pinball repair videos and he's got about a dozen of them himself and he's the all in the pinball. Right on, brother. Well, you got a lot of Chicago in your house. That's pretty cool. Um, but uh, so we appreciate everybody watching all around the world. We're up to getting, usually we get about four or 5,000 views per video. So we appreciate that. So if you want to help us get even more views, that's why I tell you to give us a thumbs up. Whenever you do that, it helps the algorithm. YouTube says, oh, hey, look, everybody's, everybody likes this video. Let's spread it around. And that reason they're doing that is not out of the goodness of their heart. They think they can make money on it. They think, well, if people like the video, we can play ads that they'll watch. And, I, blah, blah. and they don't even know that about half of y'all have ad blocker software anyway. I won't tell them if you don't. Um, so uh, we appreciate all of that. Uh, we will see you on the next video. I hope you enjoyed it. Next time we'll be putting an all tech board in this beautiful game. It's starting to come back. I can see it already. It'll be no time before we're flipping. <laughs>